Good morning. Welcome to St. Teresa of Avila Parish. As we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let's all stand and join in singing our gathering song, All Who Hunger. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. To the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. 
the word of the Lord. Jesus in speech, they sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a popular musical that came out maybe about four years ago called Hamilton. I was reminded of one of the opening scenes when I read our Gospel. Hamilton is set up as a person, the character, as a person who is principled, who is passionate, who is willing to give himself to the cause of independence. And his counterpart, his rival, is Aaron Burr, who is presented as somebody who's rather flexible and seemingly just going where the popular opinion is. At one point early on, Hamilton asked Burr, if you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? It's an interesting question that I think we have the opportunity to ask ourselves. Or in other words, what is it that we will be unwilling to compromise with? What is it that we will truly make the foundation of our lives? The answer, of course, as faithful Catholics must be God. The faith must be the center of our lives the foundation of all that we are. It must relativize every aspect. And though that may seem like a burden in some sense, we recognize that truly it is a gift. Because what we stand for is the truth. What we stand for is greater than anything else. So we stand for that, we stand on the foundation of our faith, not in fear and trembling, but with hope, joy, and love. Our Lord in our gospel passage today is being trapped by the Pharisees once again. They pose this question to him that they know has no real response. For if Christ says, yes, pay the census tax, then they could accuse him of not trusting and giving himself completely to God. But if he says no, 
don't pay the census tax, then they could hand him over to the Roman authorities. However, our Lord recognizes within them what is in their heart. And as our Lord so often does, he explains to them precisely where they have been led astray. And in his answer, we see that he says, yes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. Hearkening back to who we are, made in the image and likeness of God. And so that first and foremost, we must give to God what is God's. And then we can give to others as they see fit, but never if those things contradict that first primary aspect of what belongs to God must be given to him. Today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate World Mission Sunday. We have the opportunity to give thanks and to pray for the missions throughout the world. I encourage you and I give you thanks for your support if you're able to support the missions in donation. I thank you for that. I thank you for your prayers for the missions recognizing that the faith we have is a gift that is meant for the entire world. And so we support those areas of the world where that message is still being proclaimed. But yet we also on this Sunday, this World Mission Sunday, have the opportunity to look at our own lives and to recognize that we have been called on that same mission to proclaim the truth of the gospel in word and in deed, to stand up and witness to the faith that we have made the foundation of our lives. When we look out into the world with everything going on, I think it could be very easy for us to say to ourselves that we just want to disengage. We want to turn in on ourselves, take care of ourselves, and that will be enough. And yet the call of the Christian, the call of you and I, my brothers and sisters, is to not disengage, but it's to look with love to the world. True love, recognizing that the answer that we truly need, what people are truly searching for, is not found out there, but it's found in here, with the gift that we have been given in our faith. It's found in our Lord Jesus Christ. We can disengage and we can turn in on ourselves, or we can choose to love the world, to show compassion to the world by reminding the world and re-engaging the world with what it truly needs, a Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass on this World Mission Sunday, let us recognize that we cannot compromise our faith, that our faith must be foundational. It must relativize everything that we do, and let us stand tall knowing the strength and the support that we have standing with God. Let us not be afraid to go out and proclaim that it is Christ who is our joy. And let us look with love and compassion on the world. Let us share that love with all those that we encounter. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe.
Amen. My brothers and sisters, confident in the love and care that our Heavenly Father has for us, we lift up our prayers and needs this day. That all leaders of state may be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our military, police, and firefighters, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the pastoral region of St. Teresa and St. William, may we continue to grow in strength as a community to better serve the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may have a place in the hearts and homes of those gathered here. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may rest eternally in peace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Bidwell, who is recuperating after leg surgery. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of St. Teresa and St. William, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts and the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you especially for the gift of our faith and the salvation brought to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you to hear and answer all of our prayers and needs through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim.
praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who walk, so that those who seek you might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand, and as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To us, to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, we, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through 
him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. All are welcome to the RCIA classes held on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. in Avila Hall. The topic this week is scripture and tradition. We were informed by the B.J. Meyer Funeral Home that we are no longer able to park in the seven parking spaces in their lot next to the church. These seven spaces are not to be used for parking at any time. 
any day of the week. There are new tenants and parking in their lot will result in your vehicle being towed at your expense. Thank you for your understanding. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.